Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is now just after 2, and the State Allocation Board meeting is called to order. Um, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Senator Allen. Senator Pan. Here. Assemblymember Nazarian. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Here. Juan Morales. Here. Cesar Diaz. Here. Jeffrey McGuire. Here. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. All right, first order of business. Have you just the minutes? <laughs> Catch my breath. Um, the minutes are ready for your approval. Um, hopefully, everyone's had a chance to look at them. Any um, questions or edits, comments from the board? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, great. Second. We have a, a Good motion. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> motion from Senator Pan, second by Mr. O'Donnell. And uh, is there any public comment on the minutes? Okay, seeing none, we're ready for a roll call. Senator Pan. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Juan Morales. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. That motion carries. Okay. Okay. Next item up. Um, we want to share an executive officer statement. So if we can go to page eight. A few updates to share. So we wanted to highlight uh, to the board in Paradise Unified School District. Uh, we do acknowledge it was a catastrophe uh, that happened in Butte County a few weeks ago and uh, major loss in that community. But we also wanted to, to share with uh, the board that LPSC is uh, recommending immediate apportionment as far as the action item today. Um, but we also have further conversations um, with the district sometime this week, um, and we want to be able to address some of their future needs um, um, in the upcoming weeks ahead. So more to come in that area, and we've been actively involved with uh, other conversations with the Department of Education as well. And uh, we'd like to probably address the board in the future about what our role is um, when it comes to disaster-related uh, and how we, uh, how I see our role into helping uh, this district reshape in its future as well. Um, so we'd like to highlight that and take some future actions for Paradise. Uh, priority funding apportionments, uh, the board took action nearly $442 million in October, and we wanted to highlight that we actually had a great month uh, in November, and over $132 million did go out the door. And so there's some outstanding awards out there, and we wanted to highlight that those awards have until January 22nd um, of 2019 to come in to access their cash. And the projects that are under uh, the receiving unfunded approvals and those unfunded approvals from July 1st uh, through December 13th, they have the ability to submit a certification. And so those who submit a certification during this time frame will actually have the ability to come in for a spring bond sale. So we're encouraging those folks who have an unfunded approval to come in with the certification by December 13th. We also wanted to highlight we've been active on our joint agency workshops for the K-12 audit guide. Um, we've been partnering up with the Education Audit Appeals um, and going out and doing some road shows. Um, in October, we did two of them, one of them in Fresno County Office of Education and one in Santa Clara. And so we're looking forward for three more road shows, um, one in Downey, uh, and that's the first week of January. And then we also have one in mid-January, um, January 16th to be exact, in our office in West Sacramento, and one at the tail end of January, and that's in El Cajon. And so the first two, Downey and El Cajon, actually we have no more seats available, unfortunately, but we do have a webcast, and we have been posting our materials um, online as well. We've been getting, receiving a lot of great feedback, so we're looking forward to um, providing more education um, to our folks regarding the auto requirements of the future. And then our, uh, we also posted an information item, our 2019 calendar for the State Allocation Board. And our next meeting is January 23rd. Thank you. Any board member questions or comments? Senator Pan, please. Uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate that presentation. And uh, also, I know we've had some discussion. I appreciate uh, your remarks about um, 
the campfire and uh, the challenges there. I understand was it five schools that burned down. We have, we understand there's five schools that have been impacted. Impacted. Had okay. impacted. Five yeah. uh, and as the governor said, it's the new abnormal. Uh, and obviously, not only did we have the campfire, we had the Wolsey fire before we had Santa Rosa. We've had others. So um, clearly, it's something that um, we're. Uh, going to have to deal with as a state, but also as the body that oversees or provides matching funds for school construction. And we're, we, as we look at uh, what happened at Paradise and those schools, if what when we have communities that need to bring back their schools so that uh, children can be educated again in these communities, uh, they may be turning to us eventually for help in doing that. And so uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, I think it is something we need to talk about, um, maybe perhaps at a future meeting more in, more in depth. Uh, certainly understand that, um, for example, a school district where school is impacted by a natural disaster like a wildfire, you know, we first probably hopefully they're insured. Uh, and I'm not sure what standards of insurance there may be in terms of being sure they can rebuild. Uh, then you know emergency funds like from groups like FEMA and so forth, right? So obviously those should come first, uh, but that also means as they're going through that process, it may be a while before they come to us uh, if they uh, do. And um, you know one could argue that campfires happen. We all know about it. What happens when Paradise comes, or I don't remember the exact name of the school district comes to us, let's say a year and a half later, and says we need to rebuild our schools. We're a little short on money, and we've a uh, allocated all our bond authority. Now that speaks probably more to the way we finance school construction than anything else. It's the, uh, but you know, are the things we should be doing to prepare uh, or think about what kind of safeguards we put in place so that when we have schools affected by natural disasters that they are able to rebuild. And in fact, many of those schools perhaps might have even had funds from the state to construct them in the first place. So how does that play out as well. So I think those are there are several different issues that are out there. And I think it's good if we, as a state allocation board, at least on our niche of the world, which is about school construction, got out in front of that. And I appreciate that you're already thinking about that. Uh, but I, hopefully that, that's something we might uh, explore a little more in depth um, uh, in, in a future meeting. No, absolutely. I think you, you raise a good point because um, we actually had an experience of this nature or many natural disasters, and um, we ended up rolling up our sleeves uh, during the Calexco earthquake. It was uh, uh, eyes wide open, um, knowing what our role is, um, and actually having a lot of uh, feedback from the ground and partnering up with key agencies like Department of Education, um, Office of Emergency Services, and districts themselves, um, and laying out some plans um, and an effective outreach and also having um, some really useful tools, um, which I know Department of Education can talk about those useful tools and plans that they put in place. So, and we actually laid out um, a relatively, I think, a, a great outline for our board to share with them how we are involved and how we can be involved to help rebuild um, a school district. So we'll be happy to do that in the future. And, and I just want to follow up and, and thank again staff for, for bringing this up. <clears throat> We, we agree, this is a very important issue. Uh, we, the Department of Ed, have been actively involved, not just during the, the campfire, the hill fire, we'll see all the recent natural disasters, and, and they are devastating. Um, unfortunately, this last one, schools were not spared. Um, there were actually six schools that were damaged, I'm sorry, destroyed. Uh, an additional eight were damaged, um, and it displaced over 3,000 students. So there are tremendous efforts at the local level to try and help define placement for the students. There's always been an urgent priority in trying to get the students back to um, school, whether it's their school of origin or a different school, get them back with the parents, with their teachers, with their peers. Uh, and that was a priority here in Paradise as well. And, and Paradise Unified, Butte County Office of Ed, Chico, Durham, Oroville, all of these districts <coughs> Um, went through a lot of efforts, there was a lot of collaboration, and they were able to reopen schools on December 3rd. So on December 3rd, all of the students had a place to go to school. But that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning to try and find uh, urgent and temporary locations. 
And there are other efforts in planning for mid and long term um, housing solutions. And, and just to put into perspective, too, this is just one aspect. Facilities are just one aspect. Uh, students, families, staff are displaced. There's a lot of trauma that goes on with that. So, so there's a lot of impacts, but I think it would be helpful um, for this board to at least understand the roles that you know we have as a body, um, what the districts have in terms of access to uh, insurance funding, federal funding, state funding, but I think it's an important uh, discussion that we should have and we support that moving forward. Thank you both for your comments. Um, some, it's something obviously the administration you know, has been involved in daily calls on and we you know, really applaud um, the leadership from the Department of Ed and from the County Office of Education and everybody who's been on the ground making sure that students have gotten back to school. Um, but even as we kind of as an administration look even beyond, I would you know, one, beyond school facilities and two, beyond schools at all, at, at housing, at emergency services, at medical care, um, at all of those pieces, I don't want to lose sight um, of the facilities piece. And I think that Senator Pan makes a really good point that this is a good venue to at least talk about what is our role. And if this is, in fact, the new abnormal, as you uh, pointed out, then we're going to keep seeing this. And so if I think if nothing, nothing bad comes of this board having some good grounding in, in what that is. And Senator Pan, I thought, raised a really particularly interesting question about insurance requirements and, and you know, what do we know about that as a board and how does that interact with, with some of the funding that we've provided to schools too? So maybe all of those aspects. So we can kind of circle. I'm not sure what would be, what's a realistic time frame for staff, but I, I would, we would like to see that. I think that's, do I need a motion or something? Can we just say, can we, can we generally direct? Yeah, we, okay. we accept that. Perfect. So let's, um, let's circle on that, and then staff will get back with you, and we'll figure out when we can get that on an agenda. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Did you? Yeah. Please. I, I would just, again, thank you. And uh, I, I think that in many ways, uh, again, th I want to thank the Department of Education for your uh, hard work and uh, helping these students. I think m more of our conversation is about the rebuilding part, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because obviously in the crisis, you're trying to figure out how to move. But eventually, it's how do we rebuild communities? And... Uh, yes, people have to rebuild their houses and their businesses, but schools are not only places where kids get educated, they're also community centers. And Absolutely. when people look at where they're going to, where they're going to move and where they're going to move back and rebuild, they want to have confidence that they're going to have a school for their kids there. And if there's uncertainty about whether we're going to rebuild that school, mm -hmm. that will have an impact on rebuilding too. Excellent point. Definitely. Well, thank you all. Okay, so we'll we'll make sure that we we'll get that teed up. Um, is there any public comment on the executive officer's uh, report or any of the discussion here? Okay, seeing none, um, we can move to the next item, which I believe is the consent agenda. Consent agenda is ready for your approval. All right. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. It was Assemblymember O'Donnell and Mr. Diaz. Go ahead. Okay, Senator Pan. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Juan Morales? Aye. Cesar Diaz? Aye. Jeffrey McGuire? Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez? Aye. That motion carries. All right. Yep, yep. Thank you. We have the financial reports um, on Sun Tab 5. So, one of the highlight, um, what I shared with you briefly on page 130, is we had a very robust month of releasing funds. Um, out of the 440 plus million dollars in apportionments, we had over 100 million dollars released in November. And that's on page 130. And then part of your consent agenda, the approvals today, we had over 45.4 million dollars in approvals today. That represents 29 projects. And we also, and that's on page 132, um, we also had a number of consent items, excuse me, uh, rescissions and closeouts, and that represent almost a half million dollars. So that represents two projects. Um, that <coughs> represents what's in the consent agenda and the financials today. Any questions? No? Questions or comments from board members? Okay. I think we're ready to move on. The next section is tab six, and it's our appeals. We have um, several appeals for this board meeting, and the first two for Ross Valley and Island Union Elementary have a lot of similarities. Um, I will go through Ross Valley first. Um, 
That begins on page 149 of the agenda. And this is the first appeal that we have before the board related to the new construction eligibility uh, updates that districts were to provide as a result of the board's decision in June 2017 as for how we processed applications that were on the applications received beyond bond authority list. So for Ross Valley, the district had established um, new construction eligibility uh, using enrollment projections based on the 2008-2009 enrollment year. And because they are a small school district, this eligibility can be locked for three years pursuant to statute and school facility program regulations. The end of the three-year lock was November 1st, 2013. On October 28, 2013, the district submitted a funding application for the addition of nine classrooms at White Hill Middle School. However, during this time period, new construction bond authority was exhausted, and so the application was placed on the applications received beyond bond authority list. On June 5, 2017, the board considered an action item that sought direction on how to address these applications that were on the applications received beyond bond authority list now that Proposition 51 had passed and additional bond funds had become available. And the board opted to move all of the applications to our workload list and directed OPSC to process the applications. However, the board had expressed concern that new construction funds from Proposition 51 may go to projects that could not demonstrate current new construction eligibility. So as a result, the board opted to require that school districts update their new construction eligibility for the year in which OPSC was processing the application. As part of that meeting, the board also stated that the school districts could address the SAB on a case-by-case -case basis in the event that OPSC's determination that a project was uh, ineligible or eligible for less funding than originally requested due to the updated eligibility information and that they would be able to appeal and have the board consider their uh, circumstances. And for Ross Valley, the funding application was processed. Uh, at the time, an eligibility update was required based on the 2017-2018 enrollment information. And as a brief reminder, the eligibility is calculated using the current and then several years past uh, enrollment information. What happens is that there's a projection of what the district is anticipated to need um, several years out, five or 10 years out. Now using the 2017-18 enrollment, Ross Valley had no eligibility for its new construction project and due to the lack of eligibility, staff administratively returned the application. The district exercised its option to appeal to the board that due to this requirement that they provide the updated new construction eligibility information, that it no longer qualified for funding. And the district is requesting to use its eligibility at the time the application was submitted back in 2013. The district indicates that there was an anomalous drop in enrollment during the 16-17 enrollment year, and that is the unique circumstance that led to the decline in eligibility. Staff does acknowledge that there was a drop of about 100 students during this year, but we can't confirm if this was in fact an anomaly because it um, appears the enrollments remained fairly stable since that point. But we also note that small fluctuations in enrollment do tend to have a, a, a big impact sometimes on small school district eligibility projections. Um, however, during the processing of the appeal, information related to the 2018-19 enrollment year uh, did become available. And so we worked with the district to determine if a new construction eligibility update using the 18-19 enrollment information would justify the grants needed for the project. And if I could direct your attention to page 152 of the agenda. We have a chart there that shows with the blue line that the uh, K-6 eligibility using the 2018-19 information does actually result in positive eligibility for the school district. And if you go back one page to page 151, um, we've got two charts in the middle of that page that, that show kind of what the funding impact would be using the various eligibility available at um, the funding levels. So if you look at the first chart, using the original enrollment year eligibility, of 2008, 2009, the district qualified for 189 K-6 pupil grants and 19 non-severe pupil grants. And they submitted in 2013, had we been able to process the application during that time period, they would have qualified for $2.2 million state share. Using the 2018-19 enrollment year, the K-6 pupil grants, uh, the district qualified for 155 
and for 15 non-severe pupil grants. And if you use those pupil grant amounts at the 2018 levels, the project qualifies for about 2.1 million in funding. Um, the district is requesting the, as a first option, the uh, amount listed in the second chart on that page. So that uses the 2008-9 enrollment year with those grant amounts, the 189K6 and the 19 non-severe at the 2018 grant amount. And so that results in about $2.6 million in funding. Um, staff believes that the 2018-19 eligibility is even more accurate than what we looked at in 2017-18 when we were processing the application because it's current as of now. Um, and using the current information would be keeping with the board's decision in June of 2017 to ensure that the Proposition 51 projects were funded based on their current eligibility. So we've prepared options for the board on page 154 of this item. There's two options. The first option would use the eligibility based on the current year enrollment, which is the 2018-19 enrollment, and allow the district to receive funding at that $2.1 million amount uh, based on the 18-19 enrollment. Staff does recommend option one, uh, because we do believe it's consistent with the board's past decision to require the new construction eligibility. The second option for the board's consideration would be to allow the district to use the pupil grant eligibility at the time that the district submitted. So that would be based on 2013, which is the 2008-9 enrollment eligibility, uh, enrollment information, uh, resulting in $2.6 million in base grant funding for the project. Um, so we do recommend option one, and I believe the district is also here to address the item. Thank you, Barbara. I really appreciate it. Um, I'd like to ask, before we kind of engage in the board discussion and ask questions of Barbara, I think it makes sense to have the district come up and then everybody can be together if that works for folks. Great. So um, I've got Midge Hoffman, um, also with Derek Lennox and Chris DeLong, um, representing Ross Valley. Good afternoon, um, Chair and members. Uh, my name is Midge Hoffman. I'm the Chief Business Official for Ross Valley School District in Marin County. Last year, the board amended its policies to require school districts to update their new construction eligibility that you just discussed. Um, but you also recognize that enrollment projections, especially for small school districts, like Ross Valley, can fluctuate significantly, meaning that some districts could lose eligibility. As such, the board specifically requested that any school district harmed by this new policy f file an appeal to address the board on a case-by-case -case basis. In almost every respect, Ross Valley's loss of eligibility is emblematic of the board's concerns when established when it established the appeal process. We are a small school district. We applied in good faith and we built a $23 million facility for students that showed up. We played by all the rules. We understood that there was no guarantee of a future state bond, but however, here we are and, and funds are available. We could not have predicted that the board's policy change would coincide with an anomalous uh, decline, which has resulted in nearly $3 million of expected revenues basically vanishing. And I, I, I would like to take exception to the, the question about whether or not it was anomalous or not. Um, basically, based on our co cohort survival, it was anomalous. We lost 100 students for reasons that we do not know, and, and it was not consistent with the cohort survival. We can demonstrate full eligibility to justify the original eligibility amount, referring to the chart we've distributed, which is the um, blue bar chart. The state's own projections justify full funding when we look at the original eligibility from 08-09 in 2013-14 and prospectively. 
The reason we can demonstrate full eligibility is because the anomalous enrollment decline in 2016-17 is not factored in. We appreciate greatly that OPSC is supportive of us using 2018-19 eligibility as seen in option one, and we greatly appreciate that, so thank you very much. If the board members are willing to consider option two, however, um, we are very happy to discuss that. Um, ultimately, either option would make an enormous difference for our small district, given that we are fully, we have fully exhausted all of our um, local funding. We're, we're completely out of bond funds. Um, and uh, we, we would be grateful for you there, but would prefer option two. So thank you. Thank you, anything to add? Chris and I are available for any questions from the members. All right, I'd like to open it up to board discussion, either questions for the district, questions for staff, or any comments anyone wants to make. Who wants to go first? Assemblymember O'Donnell, please. Yes, thank you. Um, and I just want to be clear, the staff recommendation is for option number one? Yes, that's correct, using the 1819 eligibility. Okay. So I, I just might, listen, I'm going to be supportive of that, but only because I wasn't in favor of this policy in the first place. We seem to be kind of going back on a previous policy from my perspective. Uh, and I don't know if there's even legal implications of that because if we just willy-nilly pick districts without it following really sound policy, but maybe politics, where does that lead us? That, that's just something, something I question. Um, but, you know, this is about the kids, and I know that. It's not about policy. It's not about politics. So, so I'm going to be supportive of this. But, you know, I just question what happens if LA Unified comes back with 85 projects. You know, do they get... Do they get the appeal granted? Uh, that, that, are you going to recommend that appeal be granted? So those are the kinds of questions I think we need to ponder in our minds as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Pan. No, I, I, uh, I want to thank the staff for, for uh, <clears throat> looking at the, this issue. And, 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 and you know, frankly, when we passed the policy, um, we understood that uh, what happened is, is that uh, uh, the old data is fairly old. I mean, the original projection is 10 years old now, right? Um, and that we need to update that. Uh, but we also need the flexibility, which is why we built in the appeals process to, to, to address, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, instead of putting everybody who's backed up on just one year, if there, if there looked like that that one year there was a, there was some, uh, uh, that that might have been, uh, what we call anomalous, or but basically trend lines are changing a little. That we had some flexibility, and uh, I think this is this is the process working uh, in doing that. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, we also have to be conscious that every time we're granting money, uh, I mean, we have more people who want the money than we have money, right? So, every time we, whatever sum we grant out, there's somebody else farther down the line who is hoping to get it, and may not. So uh, I, think, I think what we're doing is, given the, f the resources we have to work with, is, is the uh, best option. And uh, I would uh, actually move option one, as recommended by the uh, staff. OK, I have a motion by Senator Pan for option one. Awesome. Did you want to second, Do you want to second that, Mr. O'Donnell? Great. Assemblymember O'Donnell seconds. Um, before we kind of get to that, were there other um, additional comments, board discussion? that people want to have. Okay. All right. Um, is, there, is there any public, I'll come back to the board. Is there any public comment um, on this item? All right, seeing none, we are, are ready for a vote whenever. I do want to make one quick comment, which is just that, you know, I, I wasn't here when we made the decision to, to do the recertification, um, but I, I am supportive of the policy of that. It does make sense. What I like about the 2018-19 um, is, it, it to me, it meets that policy goal of what is the most current number that at the time that we were saying that there was no eligibility, that was sort of a point in time at which the application is processed. And if what we have is a more current number, um, I am glad that we got to at least a place where we can see the most current number and say this makes sense. 
So um, I think we're ready for a vote unless anyone else has any other comments. All right. Senator Pan. Aye. Assemblymember Nazarian. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Juan Morales. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to Island Union. Island Union uh, begins on uh, stamp page 165 of your agenda, and um, this appeal is very similar to the appeal that we just heard for Ross Valley in that both districts had eligibility at the time of project submittal, but had no eligibility based on the 2017-18 enrollment information, but do have eligibility for the majority of the project using the 2018-19 enrollment projection. Um, just some of the... <coughs> Unique facts for Island Union, um, the dates are a little bit different. So they submitted their new construction eligibility using the enrollment projections based on the 2010-11 enrollment year. They are also a small school district, so they locked in for three years. And in 2014, submitted an application for the addition of classrooms in a gymnasium building at Island Union Elementary School. Again, during this time period, new construction bond authority was not available, so they were on the applications received beyond bond authority list. Um, we processed them in 2017-18. They had no eligibility for the project, so like Ross Valley, we administratively returned the application. And the district has appealed to the board that due to the requirement of the new construction eligibility, they uh, did not qualify for the original amount of eligibility. And they are requesting to use the eligibility at the time the application was submitted back in 2014. For this one, it appears that the fluctuating levels of kindergarten enrollment uh, contributed to the change in the enrollment projections. Um, however, like with Ross Valley, during the processing of the appeal, we did cross that uh, threshold to be able to have the information for the 2018-19 year. So we asked the district to look into that with us. And the 2018-19 enrollment information justifies um, the, the majority of the pupil grants that were requested for the project. Mm -hmm. And the chart on page uh, 168 will show you that they do have eligibility if 2018-19 is used for the vast majority of the project. Um, and then if you go to page 167, we can look at the funding impacts. Basically using the 2018-19 numbers, they are about $97,000 off from using the old eligibility numbers with the 2018 grant amount. So it comes very close. We have options for the board to consider on page 170. The first option is to use the 1819 enrollment information uh, to fund the application uh, using 2018 grant amounts. And the second option would be to use the eligibility that was available at the time of application submittal in 2014. Uh, for the new construction funding application. Staff recommends option one uh, for the same reasons we do believe that it is consistent with the board's past direction to require uh, using the most current eligibility. Thank you, Barbara. Um, any questions or comments from the board? Open it up. I'm sorry. Were you... I wasn't sure who represented the school. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a good, good question. Do we have a representative from the school here? Please come up. I apologize. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Reynolds. I'm actually president of SchoolWorks. I'm a consultant for the district. The district uh, sent me here because they actually are having their own school board meeting this afternoon to do the work they need to because this project we're discussing here has not yet been built. And so they're needing to approve some change orders in order to bring this project to fruition. And the district fully supports option one that OPSC is recommending. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Does anyone have questions or comments? Move option one. All right, Sen Senator Pan moves option one um, with Mr. Diaz second. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none. Senator Pan? Aye. Assemblymember Nazarian? Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell? Aye. Juan Morales? Aye. Cesar Diaz? Aye. Jeffrey McGuire? Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez? Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. All right, we'll move on to Central Union. All right, we're on the appeal for Central Union Elementary. We're on page 175. 
This product's just like um, a request from the board entertained from Miroc Unified back in May 2018. Um, this district has a project that's been approved by the Department of Defense for matching funds for a federal project. This project's for Acres Elementary School and uh, Lemoore Naval Air Station. The district has two applications on our funding list, one for design and one for full construction funding. Um, they are all prepared to meet their 20% match. The OA had approved their project, but when they went out to bid in October, bids came in 20% higher. The district was responsible for covering any overages. They initially had no problems coming up with their 20% and waiting for reimbursement for this modernization funding, but due to the high bids, they are now asking for the board for consideration to accelerate their unfunded approval for this project. Um, just like Miroc, they'd be skipping projects on our workload list. Currently, there are a little over 750 mod projects on our applications, uh, on our workload list process. Um, it's important to note that by accelerating the unfunded approval for this project, nobody loses bond authority. No one's pushed off the list. So we have plenty of authority for everybody. Uh, the second half of their ask is for financial hardship status other under evidence. When they submitted their separate design application, their bonding capacity was under $5 million, so they qualified for financial hardship. But in the several years that have passed since that, appro or since that original application was submitted, they have uh, increased their bonding capacity down to about $5.5 million. Um, that $5 million, as the district points out, was set in statute back in 1998 and has never been adjusted for inflation. So the other options for the district would be to pass a local bond. Given that the bids went out, in October and the approval pending already approved for OA, they can't go out to a bond um, at this point in time to do their project. They intended to start construction this January. Um, the other factor for the board or that the district has cited in their appeal, which is attached, is the economic situation in the district. Over 80% of the district district students come from outside the district boundaries or on non-taxable lands. So the remaining 18% of the students in the district would be paying for taxes for school they wouldn't be attending. Um, the half the school district's uh, schools are on the military base, the other ones are adjacent or on federal land. Um, the last remaining point for that, the district, the board has approved financial hardship, other, other evidence. The staff is supportive of the district's request for both the accelerated unfunded approval and financial hardship, other, other evidence that be consistent with the board's actions in May and prior board actions on financial hardship approvals. And I think the superintendent is here to speak for any questions. Great, thank you. Please come up. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Addington. I'm the superintendent for Central Union Elementary in Lemoore, California. Um, I'd like to thank the board, first of all, for considering our, our request and our appeal. And I would also like to thank OPSC. They've been, I've been in education for 29 years and um, I did not go to school to learn school finance, and, I mean school facilities and the, uh, the process and the members of OPSC have been very helpful in shepherding me through um, the, um, the various steps. So I'd like to publicly thank them as well too. Um, Central Union is a very unique school district. We are um, a K-8 district of about 1,800 students. And as Mr. Watanabe said, we have two federal facilities within the boundaries of the district. We have the Santa Rosa Rancheria Native American um, Reservation and Naval Air Station Lemoore. Um, as was indicated, 80% of our kids are federally connected. Um, so we are, are obviously are very supportive of um, option one uh, that um, the staff is recommending. The public school and military installation project or program is incredible for districts throughout the nation who have um, the opportunity to participate in that program. Our school was ranked 25th, I, I almost hate to say this as a school superintendent, was 25th worst out of the 160 which were evaluated. And through the funding process on the federal level, um, they have gone down, they're down to about th school 30 on the list, so we just barely cut in on the last, on the prior funding. Um, I would entertain any questions that the board might have, but again, thank you very much on behalf of uh, my school board um, and the district for your consideration of our appeal. Thank you. Does anyone have questions or comments from the board? Senator Pan, please. Thank you, so just to clarify, because uh, I understand there's DOD money on the line, uh, so, What's the implication? Uh, how much DOD money is on the line that would help your school district? And what's the implication if we don't act and get that DOD money? 
thank you for the question. We we were approved. Um, we actually have a an approved construction grant from the Department of Defense, or actually it's under um, Office of Economic Adjustment who uh, manages that. And their portion was or is $21 million. As is indicated, anything over and above the original grant award falls on the responsibility of the district, even if, even if it is over the 20%. Um, we would stand to um, have to default on the grant award, uh, the district would not be able to cover the additional cost that it would take in order to complete the project. We have looked at descoping the project to bring it within budget lines. Um, however, when the reports were completed by the Department of Defense when they came out and evaluated the schools, the um, construction items had to be responsive to that. And so our, our plans were responsive to their um, report. Did I, did I answer your question, Senator? Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. That. Anyone else? Did you want to make a motion? Well, then I'll Senator motion Pan? Uh, option one. Motion by Senator Pan. A second. Second, Mr. McGuire. I think I think I asked for public comment. Did I not? And is there public comment on this item? Seeing none. Go ahead, Lisa. Senator Pan. Aye. Assemblymember Nazarian. Aye. Assemblymember O'Donnell. Aye. Juan Morales. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving on to tab seven. The last item. So um, we're asking the board to uh, take action on the facility hardship project for uh, Paradise. As I shared with you earlier, um, due to the unique circumstances, um, we're asking for immediate apportionment for the facility hardship project that's attachment B. And that represents $157,000 for immediate cash um, where the district is ready uh, to submit their fund release request. So it is a reimbursement project um, in which they're ready to do so as of uh, tomorrow. And they would be providing us also the grant agreement. So we're asking the board for uh, action today. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, once Please. again, just want to thank staff for bringing this forward. I know that every little bit helps right now, the district. I know that the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, and frankly, the entire community uh, would be very appreciative. Uh, so with that, I'd like to move to approve. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? And any public comment on this item? Seeing none, we're ready for a vote. Okay. Senator Pan. Aye. Assembly Member Nazarian. Aye. Assembly Member O'Donnell. Aye. Juan Morales. Aye. Cesar Diaz. Aye. Jeffrey McGuire. Aye. Jacqueline Wong Hernandez. Aye. And that motion carries. Thank you. Um, and then with that, I think we're ready for general public comment. Is there any um, public comment on any items under the purview of this board, not on the agenda? And seeing none, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you all.